Hello friends, my name is Vivek Sharma. Today we can cover this interesting problem that's called flatten nested list iterator. So in this problem we have been given a nested list of integers and we need to implement an iterator, right? So if uh, we are familiar familiar with iterator, iterator generally has two method, has next and next method, right? So has next uh, tells us whether it's having some element or not, right? And next basically it will just uh, gives us the next element available. So uh, let's try to understand basically from the whiteboard what it's asking, right? So let's say I'm having this inner list is one and then another uh, one integer is one and then let's say another list is called two, three. So this is the collection of uh, having the nested uh, list, right? And if I want to flat this, then my output would be uh, uh, this one, 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 two, three. So what I did, I just uh, flatten this list and then I just uh, returning this list, right? So every time my next should uh, return this one and then one and then one, then two and then basically two and then three, right? So that's what it should return. So this is one and then this is one, right? So uh, what I mean to say here is basically we need to uh, structure our algorithm in such a way that next is every time giving us the next element and has next is telling whether it's this particular structure is still having the elements or not right it's still having the integers or not right and there are couple of uh, couple of uh, helper methods uh, we have been already given by the problem statements like for example is integer so is integer will tell us whether it's an integer or not get list get integer will just uh, give us the integer value if it is an integer get list will give us the list itself right so if it is a list it will give us the get list will give us the list itself so we will use these three methods to implement our uh, algorithm but first of all let's go back and step back uh, again and then let's let's try to brainstorm this like couple of ideas like how we can solve this problem right so one way I can think of like if, if I have to flatten this list, there is no other way. I mean, I have to take some additional data structure or something, right? One way might be like just I just uh, somehow I can just manipulate the input itself and I can just in place, I can try to do that. That might be the, I mean, th that might be the awesome idea if it is there, right? But that might be the next step. But if I think about like the initial step, I, I need to store it somewhere first of all, right? So when I say the storage, I need some additional data structure. It can be stack or it can be queue, right? These are the two major data structure we can use here in this in this kind of problem, right? Uh, why I'm talking about stack and queue? Because if you see the pattern here is like, for example, this is the list, right? And if I just uh, uh, if I just know that this is the list, and then I what I can do, I can just put uh, in my uh, Q, right so let's say if I'm using Q in this case I can use a stack as well but Q I feel it's more intuitive and uh, uh, convenient basically to solve this problem so if I put here one and one and then if it is integer then I put again in my Q one and then two and then the next element in the Q is three right so that's what I can do and every time I'm calling the uh, I am calling the next next what it will do I will just poll from the Q itself so every time it will just uh, my queue will it's first in first out right so first in first out the it will hit this element it will pull this and then after pulling this it will pull this one then it will pull this one like right so sequentially it will go first in first out right first which element come first that will go first right so next can work like that way has next simply if my queue is still having the element then has next will return true and for example, if my queue has been empty, then in that case, it will return false. Then it means like I don't have anything to traverse. So let's do this. Let's quickly uh, create a couple of placeholders and then we can just try to understand this thing. But I think uh, this idea should be uh, uh, easy to digest. But let's see. So let's say I am just creating one queue, additional data structure here. And this will hold the integer why integer because my next and has next is returning integer that's why i'm telling taking it as an integer right so let's say this is my queue okay and this is my constructor so i will initialize my constructor uh, this queue in my constructor itself so i did this right so queue is i'm just taking as a linked list here 
right uh, uh, to simplify a lot of things and then nested list now here the uh, decision point right so one way might be like we can think of like uh, in the distributed programming or like in our daily work right so we create let's let's assume, uh, let's assume like we create the object once and then we are just uh, using this next and has next itself like multiple times so even if i uh, increase little bit complexity while creating the object itself then i think it should be fine it's uh, it's kind of a bit of compromise but this is the follow up question that you have to clarify uh, with your uh, like either interviewer or like you have to understand the requirement like what exactly we want to achieve here but here my assumption is uh, whenever i will create the object that it will not i will not be creating multiple frequent of ob frequent object i will be creating object at once or twice or maybe like n number of the times n number of times will be like smaller than calling the next and has next because this is the crucial uh, i mean every time i need to call next and has next right to figure out whether my collection is having the element or not right so this is my assumption and that's why i suggest here just to uh, push all the elements in the queue itself here in the constructor itself so that once we create the object we will have all the elements right so what i'm saying like i, I can create another method that's called add all and uh, in the add all i am i can just pass this nested list structure and that is list of nested integer right so if i implement this method void add all right and then let's uh, take this list here list nested integer here and let's say this is nested list okay so now i just need to push to my queue now how i will push to the queue uh, because Q is holding integer and in fact my next is returning integer itself. So let's do this. Okay, because I am already having the helper method so I can just quickly check whether my uh, uh, Nested list right so this is the list so we need to think about this because this is the list right so we cannot directly check because this is not the nested integer object it is a collection of nested integer so to traverse through all the element in the inside the nested list what we need to do we need to use the for loop so let's say this is uh, an i nested integer right and nested list so with this list basically from this list i am getting this nested integer object every time now i can check this put uh, this if check that i was checking earlier so n i dot is integer right if it is integer because this is the boolean method that uh, problem itself has been given uh, it's already providing this uh, uh, helper method so if it is integer what i need to do q dot offer just go ahead and put this ni dot get integer that's it right and once i do that and if it is not integer right then in that case what it will uh, what it is there if it is not integer means it is a simple list right so if we see in our whiteboard let's say it is one right so it is integer then i will just pull into uh, i will just offer to my queue offer means inserting and poll means uh, uh, polling like removing from the queue right and like let's say this is two and three this is not a integer this is not an integer this is a list now if it is a list then what i need to do i need to traverse through this list again so now i need to frame this thing in our algorithm itself so now what i can do if it is a list then from this list itself i can just pass the list uh, inner list itself in, our, in my method so what i can do add all and let's go ahead and pass this list so ni dot get list now what it will do uh, don't be scared about recursion or anything because this is kind of a simpler and straightforward thing so what i am doing i am calling this method again right and i am passing this inner list so in this case if i go to whiteboard and this inner list will be two and three if if i am on the two and three if i am on one and one then this inner list will be one and collection of one and one then what it will do it will check like if ni dot is integer ni dot is integer means nested list now i am traversing through the inner list so in our list every element if it is integer it's going to insert in the queue and again if it is not uh, basically not a list not an integer it's again the list then i am passing this list again in the else part 
so that it can just go deep into the list in that particular list so let's let's uh, uh, let's clear the board and then let me just uh, put some more nested example here I think that may be a little bit more clear so let's say two and then one and then another nested list one two and then this is right so now let's try to understand this pattern right so I got now uh, one list let me use the red color for the output and this is our queue okay so now I got this list now I need to traverse through this list right because this is a list and that's what we are doing so if it is a list I am passing it again to my uh, method basically it's just kind of the recursion I am doing exact recursion not kind of recursion so this is one and one right and then one it found because it again will traverse through this list and then it will find this one one is integer and that's what we are doing ni dot is integer if it is integer then pull push basically and push means like offer offer means insert so i am just using lot of terms here interchangeably so uh, just simplify this we are just inserting into the queue then again one this is also integer let's go ahead and push Post means like insert sorry about that so now the next element is 2 right 2 is again integer let's go ahead and insert in our queue now we find this is not an integer this guy is a list itself right so it will again go back and it will call this recursively it will pass this list which list in this case it will pass this particular list right one and then again it's having the nested list right so now it will just traverse through and then it will just uh, take the object nested integer ni right so this nested integer ni is the object itself now it will check this one is it integer yes it is integer let's go ahead and push uh, sorry insert right and then it will just check this particular object uh, one and two it is integer no it is not integer it is a list so then it will go to the else part and it will again pass this particular list now it this our uh, for loop what it will do it will work on this particular list and it will find this one it is integer yes two is integer yes and then it will uh, insert in our queue so that's how it, this is going to work right so this for loop is definitely it's working to the every list nested list right uh, initially it will work to our uh, this uh, outer list right and in the outer list itself it will find whether it's an integer or it's again a nested list if it is again nested list then I, I am passing again that nested list to iterate further so uh, this is just a classical uh, recursion thing but I just wanted to make sure that uh, uh, whatever we are writing we are clear about that so anyways that's what we are doing and this will uh, fill our queue and if this logic is clear and this pattern is clear then that's it I mean that this is what we need to do this next is nothing but it will just pull from the queue so let's check like if q is not empty we want to safer side we will put uh, this check if q is not empty that's always safer right so if q is not empty then q dot pole otherwise what you will do just go ahead and return minus one similarly has next is nothing but it will just check q dot is empty q is not empty then it should be q should not be empty right it should not be empty if it is not empty then only it will true it will just traverse through if it is empty then there is no use right if it is empty then it should return false and then we will not do anything so this is that's it i mean the main thing was to populate how we will uh, uh, which data structure we will take stack or queue in this case i am just taking queue if you are more like uh, intuitive or more uh, conversed or more convenient with the stack go ahead and do that and we are how we are uh, uh, populating our data structure that's the key part otherwise these are the o1 operation right next and as next they are just simply just checking the queue that's it and let's check for the compilation error quickly and if uh, there is no compilation error then let's uh, see for time complexity in this case complexity so if we see the time complexity of uh, next and has next right next and has next basically they are having uh, order of one right and at the creating the object itself right creating the iterator right creating the iterator will take the linear right so creating the iterator so there is a typo here iterator it will take linear time so let's say i am having the order of n element then it will be the order of n space complexity definitely it's order of 
and why because we are maintaining this queue right we are just populating our queue based on the uh, based on the how many elements we are getting how many nested integer objects we are getting so i think that's pretty much it let me go ahead and submit and then i can quickly uh, recap uh, so this is working fine okay so now let's take a, a quick summary before ending this video first of all in this problem uh, when, whenever we have been given this structure like nested list of integer first of all let's uh, think very brute force or navely like how we will store this uh, structure and the reason of storing uh, deciding that data structure is very important here right and i feel it's more intuitive to use the queue because it's first in first out i will just uh, add all the elements in the queue and then i will just keep pulling those elements from the starting because it's first in first out so i found it more convenient but if you find like uh, other data structure or if you can wisely do it in place as well then just yeah, feel free to let me know feel free to post your code i will also learn the other things right so uh, uh, in this queue basically we are just adding all these elements right and then uh, while doing the next and has next it's super fast it's order of one itself right but definitely it depends like next and has next be how we are calling if someone is using in the loop next and has next then again like it's itself is a order of one for one iteration but again it depends like how we are calling these methods so that they, they can increase the time complexity based on the implementation how they are calling this next and has next so hopefully this was useful uh, and if there is any question comment or improvement just feel free to post or let me know thanks a lot bye